Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Wednesday, November the 16th. I'm Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at the latest developments in the currency markets today. Uh, so it's another day where the strong dollar is pretty much dominating uh, the market. We had a bit of a pause in the dollar rally earlier in the Asian session. It's now uh, resumed its uptrend, uh, reaching a fresh five and a half months high. Uh, it's broken above 109 against the yen, uh, and that's it's also pushed the euro below 1.08. Uh, with sterling, on the other hand, has uh, recovered a little bit from yesterday's dip uh, after a leaked uh, government memo suggested that the UK government uh, still doesn't have a Brexit strategy. Uh, in commodities we saw a huge jump in oil prices. It, it went up by almost 6% yesterday. Uh, this is on signs on renewed efforts by OPEC to reach an agreement to cut output. Uh, and in other currencies we are seeing the Aussie uh, not benefiting much from the commodities uh, rally. Uh, it's it slipped after Australian data showed that wage growth slowed in the third quarter. So let's begin with the uh, with the dollar and the U.S. market. Uh, we can see here that um, the dollar is pretty much. Uh, going back up again we we, sat, we, we had that brief uh, fall back early in the day during Asian trading it's now uh, going up again it's come coming close to approaching 110 yen uh, it's currently at five and a half months highs we had some uh, hawkish remarks yesterday from um, the Fed's Eric Rosengren he said that um, it would take significant negative news to deter the Fed from raising rates in December. Uh, and um, the expectations were also reinforced by the Fed Governor Tarullo. Uh, we had very strong data out of the US yesterday. Retail sales in the United States uh, jumped by 0.8% between September and October. Uh, this was uh, well above expectations of 0.6%. And we had a very strong upward revision to the September reading from 0.6 to 1%. And, and that revision suggests that third quarter GDP will likely get revised up as well. Uh, now, there are some signs that the dollar rally could be easing as the, the sell-off in uh, government bonds, particularly U.S. Treasury notes, uh, has eased uh, over the past day or so. Uh, so we could see the dollar's gains um, easing um, in the coming period uh, if we to follow uh, what the treasuries are telling us. Uh, let's move on now to, to the euro versus the dollar. We can see yesterday we had that uh, a brief rebound. Uh, the euro went back about one point. $8. Then it quickly fell back and it today touched the low 1.0699. Uh, that's that was the lowest in 11 months. Um, we had mixed data out of the Eurozone yesterday. German GDP growth was uh, below expectations. German growth eased from 0.4% in the second quarter to 0.2% in the third quarter. Uh, Eurozone growth was in line, however, though it was still very modest at 0.3%. We also had uh, German view economic sentiments index as the business survey for Germany. Uh, that showed uh, sharply improving confidence uh, in business morale in November uh, and that suggests that going into the fourth quarter um, things may be picking up in Europe's largest economy. Although overall the euro is currently still being pressured by the upcoming elections and the referendum uh, in the eurozone in December and then uh, next year um, in France and Germany in April and then later in October. Uh, the, the, the Italian referendum is, is of course first in December. Uh, if you look at the pound, we can see yesterday it fell below $1.24 briefly. Uh, this was after there was uh, a memo from a consultant group uh, meant for the British government uh, that apparently the UK government uh, doesn't have a Brexit strategy, although the UK government has denied that that was an official memo. Uh, so the UK government has dis distanced itself from that leaked memo, and that's helped the pound rebound slightly. It's back above $1.24. It briefly spiked above $1.25. Uh, Mark Carney's comments yesterday when he was testifying before uh, a committee in the House of... Um, in 
in Parliament, he said that the Bank of England has a neutral bias on monetary policy. Uh, so that suggests that the, the Bank of England no longer is expecting to provide further stimulus for the for the UK economy. Uh, we had also some inflation data out of the UK. In, uh, headline inflation fell uh, in October versus September. It, in September, it had to risen to 1%, uh, it is slightly to 0.9% versus expectations that it would have uh, risen further to 1.1%. Uh, and that suggests that uh, the the impact of the weaker pound has yet to flow through uh, consumer prices. Uh, and later today we have unemployment data out of the UK, so the pound will pretty much remain in focus uh, on Wednesday as well. If we move on to uh, commodity currencies now, the Aussie and the Kiwi, uh, we're seeing there was uh, earlier today, there was a bit of a uh, f rebound of uh, both the Kiwi and the Aussie firmed, and then they both fell back. But overall, on the past two days, we can see that they're pretty much flat. Um, we had wage growth out of Australia, which showed um, wages in Australia rose by 1.9% in the third quarter versus expectations of 2%, and that's down from 2.1% in the prior quarter. Uh, and that 1.9% reading is, in fact, a record low for Australia, Australia and it suggests that underlying inflation is likely to remain low. Uh, and that pretty much keeps open the possibility of further easing by the RBA, uh, even though uh, for the time being the RBA uh, has a neutral stance uh, where they're not, ex they're not, they're saying that further cuts are not currently needed. Um, we on the the New Zealand dollar, on the other hand, um, it should have been supported by uh, another increase in dairy prices. Yesterday we had the bi-weekly global dairy auction where prices went up by 4.5%. Uh, that didn't have much impact on the Kiwi though. It's currently uh, around 0 0.7081. Let's move on to crude oil prices now because we had a very big jump yesterday. Um, this comes despite the fact that, according to the American Petroleum Institute, crude, oil, crude stocks in the U.S. rose more than expected in the week ending November the 11th. And later today, we're going to have the official uh, inventories data from the U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, but markets, for the time being, are focusing on uh, renewed efforts by OPEC to reach an agreement among uh, its members and potentially Russia, Russia as well. Uh, the planned meeting is not too far away on November 30th at you to meet to finalize the agreement from back in September where they agreed to cut output but they're still uh, f figuring out how those cuts will be distributed as we know uh, Iran, Iraq uh, are against uh, making uh, contributing to the cuts so uh, there seems to be a renewed uh, momentum uh, on reaching a, a consensus and that's helping crude oil prices. We're seeing US crude is back above uh, $45. It briefly went above 46 uh, Brent is also up sharply as well. If you look at today's calendar, uh, we can see that we've got the UK unemployment data coming up. Um, Later in the day, we're going to have U.S. producer prices uh, and industrial output data, and then we're going to have some Canadian manufacturing data as well. Um, but that's about it. Uh, we don't have uh, anything too major out of the U.S. today. Tomorrow we're going to have uh, U.K. retail sales. So again, so it's going to be the pound is going to remain in focus for much of the rest of the week. Uh, but that's it for now for today. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.